Alright, welcome to Stampscaping 101. Here's my question. Would this silver or chrome gold, uh, foil paper um, accept the brilliance inks in a similar fashion that we've been doing on the Star Dream darker blue uh, type of paper here? Um, would white brilliance perhaps stand out against this silver background? And um, I do have a brilliance graphite black pad and will those stamp out on top of this silver foil with a good kind of um, effect. Let's test it out and find out. Now I'm mentioning brilliance over you know your other types of um, pigment inks because these ones just simply will not dry on this type of foil um, surface here. You might try other foils, I don't know I haven't tried a lot of different ones before, okay, but I've tried a couple and um, I've even tried some pigmentings on things like photo paper, okay, photo printing paper like inkjet. Never dries on there. Those oil-based um, inks just don't dry. The Brilliance inks are kind of designed to dry on non-porous surfaces. It might take a while, it might take several days, but they do dry on just about everything I've tried them on so far. I haven't tried it out on something like glass, but they're supposed to dry on uh, things like that. So let's test some uh, things out here. Okay, now this is just a quick stamp along scene that I just stamped out. Let's do the same composition, but let's try it on this one right here. If it works out, it could be a really dynamic type of um, technique or uh, media combination on here. Okay, so let's start off with um, our light beam in here. I can make a couple reference points if I want to. I kind of know where the things are going to go after just stamping this one out here, but I'll put a little reference point here, a little dot there. That'll be my lamp, okay, coming out. And let's do a um, horizon line roughly about like so, okay, down here for our seaside cove. I can already tell immediately by just putting this dot on there just how non-porous this is because there's no absorption whatsoever when I put that little dot down. It's like putting a little drop of paint there and it's just sitting there wet. I can just wipe it off and it would come off clean. But let's give this a test here uh, because if this does work out, I think, you know, it could be in for something pretty cool in terms of a potential media combination here. I think even when I put this piece of paper over the top of those dots, it could potentially just wipe them off the surface. I don't know. But if it does, we can always just wipe them back on, okay? All right, so we have our light beam right here, okay? I'm not even sure which one I should do first, if I should have done the clouds first or if I should do this light beam on here. But let's just start off with this light beam and see how things go. Okay, now the Brilliance White, I do believe that I re-inked this recently. I don't remember. Let me blot that off a little bit, like so. Okay. Now I have done these light beams before on the gold card. Now here's what I feel immediately, okay? By adding this on here, it's so non-porous that as I'm adding this down, I can feel that if I just kind of do the, you know, the wrong kind of touch on here, I'm removing ink just as much as I am applying it, so, with each tap. So, you just kind of get the feel for it, you know, find out how much you should tap on there, um, what kind of pressure you should apply, etc., okay? All right, so there's our light beam. I do like the way that that Brilliance ink looks against um, the foil so far. I haven't really used the silver foil yet, so I just wanted to get around to using this one and trying it out here. Okay, let's get, in, let's get our horizon line kind of established here. Okay, I'm going to hit it a little bit more in the center here. I'm usually going from the um, outside in, but I want to go for this um, center point here because that'll be our um, reflecting light off the surface of the water. Okay, like this. Doesn't have to be real smooth or anything like that. Um, you know, none whatsoever. If this works out the way I'm kind of hoping it does, okay. It can be splotchy. I wouldn't have like thick layers of paint on there or something like that. I think that would be too much, but. 
All right, so there we go right there. It already looks kind of interesting to me. Okay, and the other thing that I did on this one was I put some white pigment ink where the, um, the lighthouse is going to stamp out over here. I have no idea what that lighthouse is going to look like in um, the black brilliance ink. I don't know if the black brilliance ink is going to be, um, you know, detailed enough or it's going to be too thick and kind of clog up the image. I don't know, but we'll find out here. Okay, so putting some white pigment ink over here where the um, the rocks are going to be and the splashing waves. I want the, the waves to kind of be a little bit illuminated. All right, let's test out the cloud type of... Uh, I keep laughing a little bit because I just, I don't know, it cracks me up kind of playing around with some of these things and just not knowing uh, how these things are going to turn out here. Let's try some of these clouds right here, okay? Now, a lot of times what I've been doing is I've been stamping on the um, surfaces of these um, foils and metallic iridescent uh, cards in um, metallic inks. So it might be silver on silver or something like this. This one we're going to try with the black and see how it goes. All right, the cloud looks, you know, I think it looks okay. It doesn't look too bad on here. I'm being careful not to press down on like that light beam because if I press too hard, I'm no, I just know this paper towel is going to remove um, some of that ink on there. So I don't know. I, it's, it doesn't feel overly fragile. Okay, let's go ahead and layer this. See, I did that paper towel there. Let's come up here. I don't know, you can build up your uh, clouds however you want. However much you want, however little you want. Well, it looks pretty good, I think. I'm talking about the media combination, not my, not my abilities or anything like that. This is kind of, in a way, this is kind of like minimalist stamping in a way. Just, you know, I don't add a lot of... Um, things to this type of foil it's it's already very loud in terms of a surface so i tend to go a little bit more minimal it's like you do a little bit of a, a effects on it you know and then you just stamp right over the top of it or you just stamp right over the top of it and then apply some effects and just leave it at that kind of adding too much um can uh and it, it can get to be too gaudy of a surface, you know, too too loud, okay, where um, the surface is already kind of the star of the show. <laughs> You're just trying to not overdo it um, on here. Okay, so I, I'm kind of blending things out. On this little cotton ball here, I find that there's still quite a bit of paint on here because... You know, the surface is not absorbing any of this, so it's just, you know, we're applying it down here, but a lot of it just remains in the applicator, the cotton ball, okay? All right. Um, hmm. It is kind of an interesting look, though, doesn't it? It's dark in some ways and light in other ways, you know, when it's getting that reflection. It almost makes that silver kind of look dark out there and stormy in a way, huh? All right. Uh, I think that is about it. If this is it. If you haven't watched any of my other videos and you're just looking at this, you're probably thinking, what the heck are you doing? But now let's get to the imagery and let's see how those stamp out. Okay, here's the graphite black. Remember, this isn't going to dry. I keep reiterating that. Um, how long it's going to take to dry, I have no idea. At the point, you know, the time of stamping this out. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to remember if I re-inked my graphite black. The graphite black was pretty, was pretty dry. Uh, let me test this out right here. Oh, it's really dry. Pausing video, and let me look for my um, re-inker fluid for my uh, brilliance. All right right next to me. 
on the shelf. All right, my pad was really dry. I think I re-inked it, but I always like to slightly under-ink things, okay? Oops. Like applying like a goopy, you know, thick paint. It's like, I don't know, it's like thicker than a um, regular uh, pigment inks, I think. Okay, let's see, let's spread that around a little bit. I feel like I'm doing like some kind of like a, something in like a kitchen or a bathroom on the tiles where you, you know, you apply that uh, um, caulk or something like that. All right, just getting it evenly spread out. Don't overdo it because, you know, pigment inks are really thick and for detailed stamps, like, like stampscape stamps, you don't want it to kind of fill in the details. That being said, I hope I didn't over-ink this. So let me just be careful about the amount that I apply to my stamp here. I want it nice and even. Yeah, it's a little goopy. Let me test it out here. Yeah, so I think it'll come out pretty good here. I just wanted to make sure that I maintain the details in there. It does look like it's built up pretty thick on there. You can see that it's almost beaded up on there. Let me see. Let me try to get a little bit less on there. I'm untrusting. Okay, all right. Now watch the third one. I've over-inked it, okay? I hope not. Okay, so let's aim that little point right there, right into the lamp, okay? Ah, I think I moved my uh, pad. I'm stamping um, Lighthouse into um, ink down here. So if I do, do this straight onto the paper, it doesn't really move, but when you're stamping it into wet pigment ink, it kind of, you got to watch out that when you stamp it down, it doesn't glide. I think I, I think I slid it a little bit. Okay, I slid it a little bit, and I can see it a touch. I miss my lamp a little bit, but... Down here is where I slid it. See that little tiny bit? But it doesn't look too bad. Okay. All right. I need to watch for that. We'll kind of crisp it up in a, in a bit. Um, you know, where that little slide, I'll compensate for that a little bit if I can with the white paint pen. Okay, so that is that. And... Here's the, ooh, my gosh. I went like this, and uh, I think, like, ink was, like, pouring out of there or something like that. It's real goopy. What is going on? It's like it's sprayed out of there, like a little, little splotches like that. Okay, let's see. When in doubt, always do a test print, right? It's not good to just re-ink your pads and just, uh, the pigment ink pads at least, and just stamp right in there. Eh, it looks pretty good. Now see, that's stamping on, you know, this blotter paper, but I'm stamping on this foil that has this kind of wet paint on it. It's ink, but it, it always reminds me of paint. It's like printer's ink or something like that, you know, that you use in a, like a printing press. Okay, let's see. This is going to stamp this way, okay. Let's mask off a little bit here. I don't want to use this one, okay. Let's get a new paper towel piece here. And let's mask off right around here, like so. All right, kind of under mask. Don't go right up to the edge. I mean, if you go right up to the edge, that's fine, but I like to undermask my things. That's why I never need like real careful masking materials for stampscapes, because you want to undermask everything anyway. Okay, trying to stay roughly on that line that I've established with the white ink in there. Okay, I don't think I need to. Pr I, I need to press adequately so that we get a good impression. But this is such thick ink on here. Now, kind of removing it like that. Perfect. I'm getting better at that. <clears throat> so it's right on that line like that. 
But isn't that kind of that shimmer off the water really fun? I've learned that uh, to do that in the last, I don't know, maybe week. Yes, I'm the designer for these stamps, and I've been using them for years and years and years, and I'm learning things all the time. I'm a slow learner, too, believe it or not. So just doing that little shimmer in there, and then stamping it over, it's like, oh, who would have thought, you know? Okay, we have our rocks and waves here. That looks okay there, but does it... It does, it's not really sitting on any type of foundation, I don't think, so I'm going to stamp this in here. Some foreground rocks, okay. You know, it just gives it more depth and dimension, right? Okay. Again, we're stamping over, you know, some wet ink that's already been applied, so when you, you know, when you touch, it's not so delicate, you know, but just be mindful of it. So when I'm going like this, Okay. You know, just don't move it. All right, so we have that. That has a different type of look to it, doesn't it? It's almost like, a, I don't know, it's like got that silver reflective quality off of it. That looks really good for water. It's like the perfect, uh, I don't know, it's like the perfect surface for water. You can talk about shimmery. Water, we don't even have to add anything to it. It's inherently shimmery, you know, in there. So, all right, now let's see what else do we do here. Um, let's make use of a, another image off this uh, nature set. Let's go with the uh, spooky branch. This one's spooky branch. This one's not sold apart from uh, the set. In this size, there's a larger size, but any kind of branches or something like that in the foreground will do. Whatever you have. Okay, I need to keep taking my advice and be very careful about um, impression, <laughs> impression, uh, movement. Okay. As I'm pressing down on this with my finger to hold it down, I'm kind of denting the paper a little bit. You know, it is kind of a, you know, or it is a foil surface, so I can see little tiny indentations there. You know, it's no big deal. I don't know if anyone would see it. I see it, but you know, it's not, I don't really care about it. All right, tiny stamp here. Let's go for the, uh, the little gulls. I'm looking for my... A uh, little block here, and we'll do a little compare contrast. Okay, really small stamp, so. Okay, I almost pressed a little bit too much on that one. They came out a little bit thicker than what I want, but so be it. We're testing here, too. All right, so. Um, that's it for the impressions. I wouldn't recommend adding anything else at this point in time in terms of like, oh wait, a lot more like white pigment ink in the background there. All that black ink is so wet still. And the white ink too, so you don't really want to uh, potentially smear anything at this point in time in the process. Okay, now what I was talking about earlier is um, when I kind of moved my lighthouse stamp a little bit when I was stamping it out. And I said, okay, we'll just try to compensate or kind of blend that in a little bit more. Uh, I don't think blending it in, but um, just going in here and I'll add this little crisp light back into it. And when you do that, something like that, you know, if something's a little bit blurred out on the side, it, it kind of draws the attention away from that. So, all right. Now my lamp here, I kind of missed a little bit, so I don't know what I was thinking. It's a little bit off like that, but I can live with it. And if that really bothers me, when this dries, I can put another mask here and then extend that beam up closer up top there. Okay, but this is what this looks like from kind of a distance like that. I don't know what type of day this is. I feel like adding some little stars up there. 
like in this one, but I just don't know that this looks like a like nighttime scene. Maybe. Maybe if I add the stars up there, it'll look like a nighttime. I, I don't know. Oh, okay, here. Let, let me try this one right here. This scene just, these scenes just take so little time to do. Um, let's add a little bit of a extra texture in here. Okay, I don't want to get too loud, though, because, like I said, it's uh, this paper here is already very, very um, loud of a surface here, so... But I think I think we can um, add a little bit of something to this one right here. Let's let's add a couple little glowing stars in here. Okay, let me take off a lot of ink here first. I see it. If you don't like it, you just wipe something right off. Like that was a little bit too much. Okay, something like this. Those little stars like that like little glowing little bits okay I think I'm gonna do something here let me let me remove that one let me lower this one here and give it a little bit of a stronger glow like so okay and let's try to add in a couple little stars in here I think the stars look pretty good actually now that I'm looking at it I'll add a little dot in, in the middle of it this one I might make into kind of a, a North Star but have a few little more stars around here. You can add it in, into the beam. Like that, like so. Okay, actually looks pretty good. I mean, it certainly looks nighttime now that we put the stars up there, right? Okay, let's reiterate that a touch with some splashing waves there's so very little areas where i can kind of hold this down so i'm being very careful Just little splashes within the crashing waves okay yeah the black on so i haven't i need to do some silver on silver again too i really like the silver on silver Maybe we can do our st clouds in silver, or maybe silver and white sometime. So I, I, I kind of added some of those crisp little dots like that. And when you do that type of thing, if, if your lighthouse kind of smeared a little bit by, you know, kind of stamping it out like that, you really don't notice it in the end. You know, when you add these little types of things in there, it kind of pushes everything back into the distance. Kind of those undesirable little things. All right, let's see if I can do a kind of North Star on a very slippery surface here. I guess if I draw it in, if I don't like it, I can just still wipe it right off. All this stuff right here, I, I suspect, would just wipe off really um, easily um, still at this point in time because it takes a little while to dry, so that's a good thing. All right, let me try to get this. I like to drag down for my little North Star type of thing. Okay. This is um, a horizontal landscape format, so I'm going to make the uh, the arms of the star reiterate that going lengthwise, so the, the horizontal um, strokes are longer than the vertical to reiterate the uh, formatting of the card. Okay. Now when I do those, this is an eight point star, so when I do these little intermediate ones now, I'll make these shorter here, like that, okay? All right, so there we go, like that. If it wasn't a North Star like that, um, a jewel up there would look pretty cool. As a matter of fact, all right. We will serve no wine until it's time. I don't know if anyone gets that reference. Uh, an old commercial. Okay. I think my little um, rhinestones, you know, they're like silver rhinestones. I think they will look really fantastic on this silver paper. 
And let's put a couple of them even down here in the water as a result. Crystal little twinkly bits in this uh, surface right here. Okay, so I've got all these little dots of glue down here. I'm getting better at using my glue thing. I just almost never glue anything until kind of recently. All right, let me grab my gem picker. And we have our gems here. Uh, let me use a bunch of small um, gems for the, the water um, sparkles. These are called, it's called specular light. It's light that's brighter than white. It's that little reflective quality coming off of the uh, water surface that's reflecting um, light on, you know, in that area. It's not white, but it's light, it's reflective light. I can't even tell if I have a gem on here. Some of these little crystals are so, um, Tiny, it's hard to see if I even have one on here. Okay, let's see what's over here here. Okay, let me see if you can see that right down here. Is it down in this area right here? Looks like that. Okay, and then we'll add some up in here into the sky. Well, let's go with the same size, I guess. I'll add, I'll add a larger one, too. Um, just for a little bit of variation. Let's move up into a little bit of a larger one. Just so it's not so monotonous. see if I've added this anywhere else. Okay, I think that's it. All right, so what I learned on this one, I think that the white on the silver looks, you know, it looks pretty good. Maybe I would, I should have built that out a little bit, those clouds, and layered it a little bit more. Here's the blue right here, okay. Boy, this one, <laughs> as far as drama goes, this one's more of like this subtle kind of um i think there's more tranquility to it but you know it's this one it's hard to beat the foils for impact okay i mean they have kind of a different spirit to them don't they <laughs> i don't know that that silver looks awfully uh interesting like that it's almost like a like a like some kind of like black and white movie or something like that you know it's like a silver screen or whatever. But there you have it there. Um, two different, uh, I don't know, viewpoints of the, uh, of the lamp. That white down there in that water is really fun. You know, I almost don't even need those little crystals, but I don't know. <sighs> you know, when you're testing something out, you just want to take it a little bit farther, uh, in every direction, you know, possible when you're doing these tests like that. So, and then when you do something like that, you decide, eh, do a little bit of this or that, you know, a little bit more of this, a little bit less of this in the future, whatever. I think this would look great with a, uh, like a moon um, above like a lake or something like that or above the water. So play around with uh, different things like that. My first time stamping black on top of the foils too. And, uh, I don't know. I really like it. Look how dimensional that is. Look how much that stands out against the background. I mean, everything's on the same plane. It's just a two-dimensional surface right there, but oh well, look at that. When you go like that over here, doesn't that look like it's popping out against the background? All right. Now, I don't suspect this is going to dry anytime soon. I'm talking about two or three days, but who cares? You know, you just throw this on you know, a bookshelf or whatever, just out of the way and go back to it and, you know, whatever, three or four days or something like that. It should be pretty well set up. Depends on your climate and your house, the drier it is and whatnot, but um, I don't know. I think these are worth it. Then you throw it into like a, you know, a little clear, 
you know, plastic bag, you know, like those ones like this, those super clear um, bags or whatever, after you kind of format, throw it in there and mail it out like that, and people can put it on display in that bag. The bag doesn't really interfere with the, the visuals of it. I think it's just fine, so. All right, now I think I'll be able to do a better job, you know, after this kind of this re-inking black kind of soaks in a little bit. I like a little, got a little too blobby with my birds. They should be a little bit more crisp, like this, but, you know, I don't think they detract too much from there. All right, so fun stuff. Brilliant sinks and uh, foils. Pretty formidable combinations uh, to play around with and just so much fun to explore. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this video and the end results of this scene. And if you have any types of foils like this, I hope you kind of play around with it. And uh, if you do, let me know how it goes. Always interested in hearing um, kind of what you're coming up with. And uh, I don't know, maybe you have some do's and don'ts for me too, or just different recommendations on uh, different techniques and whatnot. Okay, thanks for watching.